Alright, so uh, moving on, uh, this is part B for Linear Algebra 3.1. We're almost done, folks. Actually, no, who am I kidding? I'm not done. Um, anyways, uh, 16, uh, so again, similar idea as 15, right? Uh, in order to be parallel, you know, you have to have a scalar uh, B uh, that acts as a multiple for the original vector and the new vector, right? See, so well, not original and new vector, two vectors to be parallel. So anyways, so in order for these to be parallel, um, yeah, in order for this to be parallel, you need, uh, you could say t equals one half, so that would be four and negative two, uh, four and negative two. Okay, so welcome back to part B for linear algebra 3.1. Uh, uh, we're almost done with this section. Two more sections to go. God, okay. Uh, <laughs> we need to stop swearing. Okay, so my apologies for certain, some viewers who are sensitive to these things. But anyways, okay, so you have this and you have that. Oh no, no not this yet. So you have this uh, vector and similar uh, a thing as what we've done back in question 15. Just want to see if two vectors are parallel to each other, right? So I just want to make sure this vector is a, it can, is a multiple of this vector, right? So that's that's all I did. So that so here I want to say well t equals to one to be parallel. The reason why because if I plug in one here, it's going to be eight negative two, right? Eight negative two, four negative one. Uh, are they uh, multiple? Can I put a b or k or whatever the the scalar constant so that if I times this, it will equal exactly same as that? It totally does, because 8 divided by 2 is 4, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1, so it's perfect. So, this is parallel. B, uh, not parallel, then the, my reasoning was, well, the only way to make that happen, if, as far as I can tell, is it's got to be 8 and negative 2, so that you can, you know, it'll still be a multiple or whatever, right? Here's the problem, whatever T you put it in, right, so let's say it was a positive T, right, then this will stay positive, which is good, but this will also be positive. I gotta have positive and negative, right? It's gotta be a multiple, uh, multiple product of, of the original u vector, right? So I can't think of any t value where it would give the first, uh, first entry positive and the second entry negative. Can't be done. Don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. That's why I say it's not parallel. C also not parallel for a different reason. So it's one. Fine. Maybe I could, you know, I maybe I could make this four and this will be negative one over four. Right, that way it would be, you can just times it by four to get there. Uh, but not possible though, because it's t squared, and that's negative, right? Anything squared cannot be a negative number, as far as I can, I don't know. So because of that, it's not parallel. So pretty simple stuff. Just you know, walk through it, uh, walk through it if uh, if you well, you know just want to be confident. But again, not a new idea. Eighteen. This is where it gets a little bit fun. Um, 17 should be on the solution manual, so I trust that you can look it on your own. But, uh, so I thought I'll just purposely do 18 instead. Uh, that actually turned out to be a very blessing in disguise. And I'll tell you why. So, you have these two vectors, and basically they're saying is, well, if I have a scalar constant of A and B, so how do I make sure this times A and this times B gives me this new vector? So, you know, this is where the column vector comes handy. So remember, we always used uh, the other, other uh, format, I forgot what it was called, but um, actually that is unacceptable. I should know what it is by now. Okay, going back, going back, going quickly back. Um, oh yes, comma delimited form. Yeah, so these are comma delimited form. I need to memorize that. Anyways, uh, but so we can actually, this is a good opportunity for us to use the column vector because it makes more sense. I'll tell you why. So AU, right? equals that, so we already know that, so that same thing is A, and I just put U in a vector format, right? It's a column vector, that's the term, right? Doesn't this look a little familiar? Matrices, so let's put that into augmented matrix for format, so you have these, right? So 2A plus negative 2B, so, and then just follow through, A plus 3B, here's an interesting thing though, right? You see, notice these zeros here? Because of that, we have b equals to 3 and a equals negative 1. We don't even have to do elimination. This is beautiful. Anyways, so we have, so, so, uh, sorry, I got a little excited, but a equals to negative 1 and b equals 3. Uh, so that's all we need to write. Uh, I don't know, 17 will be that simple. I'd imagine uh, for 17, 
uh, once you come up with, uh, once you put it in an augmented matrix format. But again, it should be rocket science anyway, though, right? Once you put it in this form, then all you have to do is just go through pro appropriate elimination and then just find the you know unknown solutions. So we've been doing this since section two, so we should be solid. Oh no, section not even section two, section like one point two or something like that. So this should be solid, right? So. Anyways, that is that. We're going to move on to more interesting ones. Question 19. Okay, so this is question 20. Um, yeah, so uh, 19 should be in a solution menu. So I thought it would be a nice refreshing change to uh, do this question instead. So, um, oops, one sec. Ah, okay, so there's the question. Uh, 20. Yeah, so when it's satisfied, so I have these. So basically what I start, so similar to what we've been doing with the parallel, but you know, with a different twist, because we're no longer looking, we're no longer looking for K constant, we're looking for C1, C2, C3. So in other words, the unknown solutions, just like X1, X2, X3, that we used to do plenty of times in the earlier section. So you have, uh, so basically they give you this, you guys can see that, they, they literally give you this. So I'm just going to convert the, uh, uh, I'm just going to convert the um, uh, common limited form to uh, column vector. Just uh, that way, if I do it this way, same thing, right? And then all I did was, I now I'm going to write this in a linear e uh, equation format. Like that, and then this should be all familiar, right? I'm going to put that into augmented matrix form. Down, bam, right? So now I'm going to go through some elimination. I actually wrote down these just in case if you guys can't. Uh, can't catch what I'm doing right away, but these are the explanations. So I got up to all the this part this far. Now your textbook seems to suggest that maybe you should simplify this. That may or may not help, but uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I have the C1, and then I can find C2, and I can find C. Sorry, bleh, what am I saying? I can find C3, I can find C2, I can find C1, right? Because if I have C3, one missing variable, one missing variable. So I'm just gonna jump right on a gecko. But again, if you want to simplify this further into, uh, simplify further, like for example, simplify this and maybe do more cancellation, all hats off to you. But why, right? This is so much easier than this because you have to worry about. Oh, okay, am I uh, multiplying and adding all these uh, constant columns correctly, right? So because of that, I would rather just go right uh, uh, into the linear uh, to the algebraic form. So. Um, anyway, so I'll let you look at that, and then I'm gonna get rid of this part so that I can show you what I have. Okay, so that's gonna be so C3 is gonna be uh, negative 20 divided by 5, that's just negative 4. C2 is gonna be same thing as 6 plus C3, so that's going to be 6 plus negative 4, that's going to give me 2. And then C3 is going to be, oh no, what, the, what am I doing? So that's going to be negative C1 uh, plus 3C3 three three equals to negative 18. So that's the same thing as uh, C1 negative equals to negative 18 minus 3C3. Three that's going to be, uh, what was my negative 4, so that's again, uh, uh, let's see, 12, negative 18, uh, I'm going to do one at a time, 12, which gives me negative 6, but remember this is C is negative 1, right? So therefore, so C, 1 equals to 6, because if we cancel out negative, cancel out negative there, so you have that. So, yeah, so I'll uh, I tend to leave it like this, and my and my prof's like, no, this is horrible. Uh, you know, what was coming to an end. So I'm gonna put it in a little bit nicer format. Um, scalar. Okay, so I suppose I could do this. Uh, C two, C three equals two. What do I want? So that's your uh, yeah. So that's gonna be. Uh, it's near 4, 2, and 6. So that's that. That's 20 for you. Um, let's try... Mm, let's try 20. Uh, wait, hold on a sec. Uh, are we doing all the way up to 
22. Okay, so I could do both. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so this is 22. Again, similar idea, right? The only difference now is rather than trying to... Actually, it's essentially the same idea. They already just told you from the get-go that uh, C1, C2, C3 values... Oh, sorry about that. Any C1, C2, C3 scalar values, constants, cannot give me this, right? So, that's basically saying there is inconsistent solution. Go find it. And, yeah, it turned out to be pretty easy, actually. Uh, once I... Once I wasn't uh, uh, obvious at first when I saw, first uh, had this format, but once I put it into a column vector, I was like, wait a minute, zero, 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 negative two, done, right? I still wrote it out because you know I have to show the work. I wish I could just stop, just like done, right? But uh, no, can't do that. So I had that uh, put it into linear linear uh, equ equation format and then convert it into augmented matrix format. So this second row inconsistent, no solution, done. So. 21, I'm not, I don't know if it's going to be exactly simple, but it's the same idea. So basically, you'll go through the same thing, right? Put it into column vectors in this format, and then put it into linear equation, put it into augmented matrix, uh, and then do the elimination until you see uh, one row uh, that happens to be, uh, you know, have, happens to have an inconsistent solution, like this one. And then just ID and says, there, this is why C1, C2, C3 cannot exist. Uh, if these were two were equal, or no, actually that's a poorly word phrased. I could say these two cannot equal regardless of what C1, C2, C3 values should have. So, next part is actually a little bit more interesting. 29, 100, mm, no, okay, I don't want, I think if there's a good bad, this is, it's going to be on a test, but to be TBC. Okay, so uh, 29, I would totally put this question if I was a, t a teacher, just because I like these kind of questions, but you know, but whatever. Um, this uh, Star Wars looking uh, symbol, or was that the Confederacy? Or whatever, yeah. The only reason why I know that is because I used to be a huge fan of CIS. Um, uh, the, not a huge fan of story or Jedi's and all just like the stuff, but the potential of having a fully mechanized robot as a, uh, as a military armament. I mean, you know, the Nazi Germans would have, would have like, love to have had that, but anyway, but uh, that's another story, um, yeah, Ugh. everyone's talking about the movie and I'm even using those references now, this is not good, I swore to not watch those ever again, but anywho, so you have that, so all we, so basically, you know, we're trying to figure out what is the sum of all, uh, uh, uh yeah, what am I, some of all fears reference. What, what were they doing? Some of all vectors, right? So basically, uh, if you just use common sense, right? I mean, you can see that A is going to be same as D, F is the same as C, and E is the same as B. So they will cancel out. Remember in chemistry, if you ever uh, taken it, uh, how do you calculate the dipole dipole moment? And if you had a, a tetrahedral shape or any like, or, or there's stuff like that. You look at uh, if the electronegativity difference is the same, and if they're opposite of each other, they cancel out. So even though if it's like CH4, for example, it would have a net overall net polarity of zero. For people who didn't take chemistry, I just had a stroke, so ignore what I just said. But nonetheless, um, yeah, it's a similar idea, right? So A and D is, so I wrote it down here. You don't have to, it's pretty common sense, but I would totally write it down just in case. Uh, a vector A is gonna be the same as negative uh, D vector, right? So basically, all this is just a fancy way of saying A and D are the same thing, except the signs are changed because A is going up, so by default, if it's going the other direction, it must be the negative, right? So same number, same number, but this is opposite, so it is negative, right? So remember, the K scalar constant of negative one gives you the in reverse, right? So that will give me zero, that will give me zero, that will give me zero, right? So it, now you can test it out yourself. Let's say A was five, right? Then D has to be negative five. So zero. Same thing, whatever, right? So your net vector will be zero. Oh, no, 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 no. Zero vector, yeah. Yeah, can't uh, subtract vectors to have a number. This will become critically important in the next section. But anyways, so that's that. B net, uh, so what happens if uh, all the vectors were halved? It's the same idea, right? So net vector equals to, remember this equation we use, right? Uh, v, uh, B constant, right? Scalar constant times our original vector, which happens to be net vector of zero, right? So just times it together, and be zero vector. So same idea. 
Uh, C, uh, you know, they're just asking what happens if we get rid of our A vector from the net, ve net vector, right? So if we got rid of this, what would happen? Well, the F, B, and uh, E, C will cancel out just the way it would, right? But the D has nothing to, that not, uh, A is not there to cancel out D anymore, so D will remain, right? So it will be whatever D is, right? So the answer will be D. And D is going D, so it's either D, or you could also say um, negative A vector. Really doesn't matter. Basically, it's, max, it's a magnitude of A or D going this way, right? So, so either D or A flipped, right? So that's all there is. And the D is pretty common sense. They're just saying, well, I'll just literally read what it says. You may rephrase it any way you want. Basically, sum of our five vectors remaining after one is removed equal to the negative of the removed vector. Sounds really redundant. I think this is my way of saying it's better, but, you know, it doesn't matter. How I, as long as you understand, that's, that's what matters, right? So, what I would say is if you get rid of one vector, right, the vector opposing, uh, I, I oppose uh, the opposite of the vector that's opposite of the missing uh, vector, that's going to be the net vector because everything else won't change right it will all cancel out so uh, anyways that is that uh, that wraps up uh, 3.1 I don't know if I can start 3.2 right away I do have to tutor a bunch of kids uh, soon but um, yeah but I'll try to upload these as fast as I can uh, and uh, we'll go from there anyways I'll see you back in 3.2